live. Hello, Tom Lavecchia here with the latest edition of the Arm Chair MBA. Today, a very special guest and a very special show. We are doing my normal interview, but we're doing it in a live fashion over StreamYard. We got Tommy Stiggs going to be talking about the Jersey mob and very, you know, candidly, um, he had some requirements. We're not going to talk about anybody who's current or anybody that could be negatively affected by the podcast. It's going to be more of an historical reference. And we're also not going to discuss who exactly he was associated with out of respect. Tommy Stiggs, welcome to the Armchair NBA. How you doing today? Pleasure to be here. I'm good. How are you? Very well. Very well. We got Sandy here who's going to assist us. Hello, uh, Sandy. In the podcast. She's an associate of the Lebecca family. <laughs> and uh, we're going to do some fun things. All right. So where did you grow up? What part of Jersey? Belleville, Newark. North Newark, Belleville. I was born in Newark. Grew up in between Belleville, South Orange Avenue in Newark, and Stephen Crane Village on the border of Belleville and Newark. So we were and, for those, and for those that know or don't know, Belleville is the home of Frankie Valley and most of the Four Seasons. Joe Pesci. And Joe Pesci as well. Graduated from my high school. Love it. So we're going to jump right in because uh, a, 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 a – Brooklyn Mini Guy, Tom Yager, Lexi, Tom. We're going to have a little interview, and then we're going to open it up for people that want to jump in, especially the Four Horsemen are welcome to jump on. We're going to chop it up a little first before we open it up. All right, so give us, you know, that was, you know, big Italian area, especially North Newark back then. Um, give us, like, your first, um, I guess, brush that, wait a second, you know, this is the mob, what is it, and how did you get introduced to it? Okay. In this area, in that area, it's kind of, it was everyday life. We didn't know what actually what it was. It was just natural to us. Yeah. So as a young boy, there was card games going on in my basement. My mother hosted card games. Oh, wow. She cut the pot. She had card games. I was serving sandwiches at probably nine years old, making tips off poker players that would be in my basement for three days at a time. Wow. And then fast you forward, young, right? Yeah, young. So fast forward, get around high school. I say there, uh, one of my friends, 11th grade, lost a ton of money, $54,000 in 11th grade to Ooh, the bookmakers, yeah. right? I... So I was not a gambler, but I said, there's money to be made in this. I started photocopying my own football slips. Oh, wow. Based on the regular distribution of those old football slips, I photocopied them. Wait, you would photocopy and take your own action? Thousands of them. And what if you lost? Yeah, it was a shot I took. I, there was enough money coming in to cover the losses. Those tickets were, nobody wins. So Holy I got caught. By they, what guy? The guys found out I was doing this. And what happened? They called me in. Long story short, I had to go through them, and I had to buy the tickets printed for them every week, from them every week. They had their guy that printed them. And 4,000 4, tickets a week I was moving at a young age, running it like it was a, a big wow. business. So you yeah. were, so you were, for those that are jumping on, uh, Tommy's, uh, Stig's, uh, out of the life, we're just going to talk about the good old yeah. days. So, so you got caught. And then did you? they make you pay a little back pay or is more like moving no. forward? You got to work with us. No, no, no. There was no back pay. I had family involved and nobody was going to really bother me in that way. Yeah. They just said, you you know, you got to conform. You, you got to, you know, you can't just do this. <laughs> it's not. Now, now your family that was on your side and loved you, but they biff you in the back of the head. Tom, what do you think you can't do that? Or no. said, screw it. Good for you. I, I got you. No, they pulled me in deeper. <laughs> I love it. Now, now, initially, again, we're not going to give away too much because you're still in that neighborhood and you're still like a regular guy. But at that time, what a family was it associated with? Genovese guys. Now, I am unpeeling, or as I say, unpacking. And the more I dig deeper, the Jersey Genovese is probably the strongest of all the seven families that operate in New Jersey. Is that a fair say, even then and now? I got to say, in the Belleville area, it was almost equal amongst most of the families. I would say we had in this area 
represented by every family, yeah. the social club by every family. Yeah. And uh, Gambinos were strong. Yeah. Very strong. Bobby Cabert. His main man was in Belleville. Bobby Cabert, right? Bobby Cabert. I got a great story about him. Let's but, uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I could go on. He's not around anymore. That was our deal. Not around. No, he's not around. Fast forward to current time. Yeah. Now, six months ago. Yeah. I get a message from somebody. In Morris County, knows I'm from Belleville, from this area. Yeah. They buy, uh, people go bad on storage units. They go bad and they auction them off. Yeah. And you could you get the contents. It could be a dollar in there. It could be 20 million. Yeah, it's like storage wars at show. Yeah. yeah. So this lady, somebody bought this storage unit at an auction. Bobby Cabert's ashes are inside. <laughs> you, What? In a box, all the receipts from the from from the funeral parlor, everything, everything. See, I didn't think I didn't think many Catholics did that. Let alone wise guys burnt there. He was cremated. He was cremated. Wow! Right out of the prison. It wasn't like a big funeral here or anything. It was. Wow. It was a quick thing. Uh, we got the ashes to the right people. I reached out here. A couple of people reached out here and there, and. Uh, Wow. It got to where it needed to be. And Bobby. he was a powerhouse in yes. New Jersey. And part of the reason why he was believed to be strong, he had ties into the police, I believe, correct? The what union? Uh, to the police. I think he was actually somewhat hooked up, like with the, like a lot of police. Like the, He had a very long run, an unusually long run. Yeah, right. And as my understanding was, he had like police corruption or state police or OC. Like, I don't know if it's true. I don't know. I don't part remember part of the rumor, you know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't remember that. They had trouble with the state police. Oh, that did, yeah, yeah. In a bar in Belleville, they beat up a state state policeman in a, in the bar on uh, Washington Avenue in the Belleville pub. Some wise guys. Five or six Gambino guys went to work on a, a you know a cop. Really? Yeah, state state how, cop. How did that a statey? State cop. A state state, 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 state Yeah, that's what they said in Boston. Well, it didn't I, end well. Bad, huh? They find those guys, or like, yeah, know? it didn't end well. It didn't end well. Yeah, I was gonna say, you don't. It's almost like being no. a main guy. You don't want. No. To they were a wild group. Wow. So I want to touch on the Gambinos for a second. So Bobby Cabert was a whale. I knew that, and yeah. but, but it took a while to get him. They got him like later in life. Like I think it was yeah. like seventy. Later on. I got to him. Later on, but he because he was uh he was a rough neighborhood guy. He did his things around the neighborhood. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't until Gotti that he really got uh, known. Gotti loved him. Yeah, he was like Gotti's guy in Jersey, right? He was the guy. Gotti would come to Belleville to his place over there. Wow. In Silver Lake. That's a section of Belleville, Silver Lake. Yeah. And I know Gotti would stop at, I think, the Lindhurst Diner for the world-famous cheesesteak. Okay. Uh, cheesecake, cheesecake, cheesecake. cheesecake. I know wow. John Gotti loved the cheesecake. So anytime he came here to Belleville area to meet you know, the bubble guys, Yeah, you would get a piece of that cheesecake. Wow. Now, Crazy. interesting enough is Bobby Convert, like, again, going back and talking about him and just what I know historically and being a Jersey guy, he was a whale and he was powerful. But why? Did he have big big numbers? Did he have hitters? Was he political? Like, what, what was that source of strength? Yeah, balls. He was just, he was that guy. Yeah. They called him. He came. That was it. And he had a great crew. The crew behind him was... Tremendous, tremendous crew of guys. Yeah. I remember my old podcast, John, I used to say it really mattered who your captain was and your crew was because you were kind of a family with, within a family. So let's yeah. like kind of migrate over to the Genovese, right? Yeah. Now, Genovese, you have different Genovese factions, yeah. historically very strong. Yeah. Now, you can't talk about the Genovese in New Jersey without bringing up Richie to boot. Did you catch any of his error or were you too young? Too young. My mother, my grandparents, uh, yeah. obviously, they grew up in the same neighborhood. My grandparents were some from the same neighborhood he was from. Yeah. Uh, we, I still go to the church. I mean, that he donated to and yeah. his neighborhood. Uh, you know, the neighborhood changed once uh, they built the projects. The Italians moved out. They wanted to do public housing and they forced all the Italians out. But that was his neighborhood and uh, we're still faithful to it. And who, uh, who, if you could speak to, who took over for Richie to boot? Richie to boot, then Andy Gerard. 
gentleman of a man. Then Pee Wee yeah. DePhillips after him, Tommy DePhillips. Well, and these are, I mean, these are all heavyweights and, and heavyweight you, guys, but yeah, heavyweight guys. But you know, if you walked across the street and you were getting a crumb bun, they'd buy it for you. Yeah. Now, Just, now I, I always like to talk about and I always like to read it and, and, and research the most powerful guys that you almost never heard of. And one of those names that come to come to my mind is Jerry Katina, who was a, a whale, had a yes. long run and died his own bed in Florida. And it was believed that he was like top three in the Genevieve's family. And we'll get to Bobby Manor in a moment. But, you know, but he was in New York more than Jersey. Oh, oh, I always thought he was Jersey mostly. He was, but he was in New York more than Jersey. He was Bobby. an underboss for a period. Yes. But he always kind of managed to kind of like just not be involved or stay no. behind the radar screen and not Smart. fly below the radar screen. And then how about, how about Bobby Manor? So Bobby Manor kind of took it over. And interesting yeah. enough is he was a Hudson County guy. Yeah, he was a Hudson County guy. Uh, but he was a very powerful guy back then. I mean, well, he was in the mix. You know, the, the Genovese guys were wide, long, strong, different crews. They were the, probably the most dominant. So you would have his crew, then you would have Pee Wee's crew. All who these was different. Who was Pee Wee? Tommy DePhillips. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So Tommy DePhillips took over Andy Gerard's crew, which was Richie the Boots' crew. Got it, got it. And and so Bobby Mana rose to power. I think he was at a Hoboken, the Hudson's County guy, yep. and obviously got caught on tape um, planning to kill Gotti. But I don't. Yeah. I love to say that wasn't true. Well, it's hard to who knows <laughs> with all that volatile situations going up. His real name is Lewis, though. His real his name isn't Bobby. Oh, Lewis, not Bobby. Okay, but but they, they call him Bobby. We call him, everybody called him Bobby. Yeah. But Lewis was his name. Interesting, and, and and you know it's interesting because you talk about the five families, right? So whether you started off with Luciano all the way now to you know Baloma, who who may may not be the boss, who knows, right? But, who knows and today? Dante and Lombardi. But even in New Jersey, the Genovese just operated differently. Just a different way. So, so how did like you, like how did the Genovese guys, in your opinion, operate differently than maybe even the powerful Gambinos at the time? I just think they they were business oriented versus anything else. They were smart, smart. The gentlemen, right? Gentlemen, smart. You know, okay, during the day and then the Sunday football games are going on. Everybody's around, all the clubs. Yeah. But on Friday night and Saturday night, everybody's out. We're all out of clubs, right? Yeah. None of them. Wow. A few. Interesting. But laying low, staying on point, conducting business, getting it done, and just they were fresh on Sunday morning, fresh. You know, on the – um. The Mafia Ten Commandments that were found in Miguel Greco's house in in, in uh, Sicily. Um, one of the Ten Commandments was you were not to go to a discotheque and to bars and places of ill repute. That comes from the back of the old Men of Honor days, yeah. and you were supposed to be like a serious guy in life and not fuck around. Yeah, but they were in the clubs with us. They had fur coats on and <laughs> macanudo longs. You know, it's hard to you know. <laughs> It's but hard when you're earning money. Listen, a lot of guys came from zero, zero dollars. Yeah. I came from negative money. You understand yeah, me? I came yeah. from negative money. Yeah. So when I was able to be, go out, buy a shirt, go out, have a good time, what were we going to do? Tony Pro. That's funny. Yeah. So, you know, what are we supposed to do? We never had this before. Now we're able to buy a car. Buy a shirt, go out to the club. How do you not do it when you come from the humble, humble, less than humble beginnings, most of us? Good point. Now, one name, and we'll get to it in a little bit, is one name you do not hear, and I like to use the word indigenous to New Jersey, is the Cavacantes. Nowhere to be found in Newark. Now, very small representation there in your era, right? Frank Palizzi was the only one, and he was a Belleville guy. He was from Belleville. He's dead so, now. So he was, a, he was a whale. He was caught up the pizza connection trial. Unfortunately, he got cancer. You know, he got sick. Yes. But he was he was probably, I would argue, top five in the state at one point. Would you agree? Yeah. Well, he had 
He had a lot of the Bevel area tied up. Yeah. He had the he had the club. It was called Casa Polizzi. Oh shit! That was like the Copa Cabana over here. Oh shit! And uh, you know, you go to Casa Polizzi. There was uh, valet parking. Everybody's dressed up. Yeah. And that was him. But he was basically the only guy. Maybe him and about two or three other guys that were with him were around the Bevel area. Got but it. But he had a construction and company. He had a legitimate construction company. That I knew. He was a construction. Now, as I mean, this goes a little before your time because you're a younger guy. But why the Cavacantes with him? I figure he would have been uh, with the Genovese or the Gambinos. Maybe he's from that part of Sicily. Maybe I should check it out. I think it's because he was he was a hundred percent Sicilian from the other side. The oh. LCN guys around the Belleville Nork area within the last 40, 50 years were American Italians, Italian Americans. Correct, correct. So correct. the the social clubs were all American Italian. Yeah, versus- then you had one then you had one Italian Italian club on Bloomfield Avenue, and then you have Polizzi who was you know with the with the guys from Elizabeth. Got it. And and, and I'll speak to Elizabeth in a little bit. That was uh the Rivera yeah. yep. club and yep. uh, that's where they are in Sicily. And a lot of guys that came over from the other side. And that's why yeah. the Jersey family was very strong for a bit. But we'll, we'll get to that in a second. So I, I was playing at a few years back at a game in Bloomfield. And I don't know. It was a, it was a, you know, it was a connected game. And um, I don't know. I, I kind of, I knew, I knew the guy, but I don't know who he was with, to be honest with you. I never, ever, ever won in Kenilworth. I never won in a connected game. Are they all crooked, or was I just getting no old Chicago no. cards? They were not. They weren't rigged. I worked doors. Never. Kenwood, New Jersey, Bloomfield Avenue, behind the um, listen behind that, uh, that tanning salon over there. It's gambling. Nobody's winning. I did this for years. Yeah. I handicapped. I worked games. I worked the doors. I did it all. Yeah. Nothing was really rigged. Nothing was rigged. Yeah. It's gambling. You're not winning. No matter what you do, you're not winning. True. All right. So, um, looking about the west side, kind of Newark area, but I want to go deeper on the west side. So, again, me being a Jersey guy, being that area, you know, Union, Rosa Park, Elizabeth, and so forth, Kenilworth. Um, but a name that came, that, that kind of superseded the area was the Campisi. The Campisi. The Campisi. Oh, yeah. They were huge. Yes. The brothers, you know, the family in uh Balesburg, Balesburg, uh, uh Newark, and they were believed to be uh big into H, right? Uh, just allegedly, uh, you know, I don't want to. You know. I don't know what drugs at that point, but definitely, yeah. Uh... But but they were but they were um they were heavy hitters, right? Yes. And, but again, to me, I thought they were their own family, but they were part of the West Side. Yeah, there's no there's no own family. You're with somebody. No such thing. You're somebody's, you, you know, you're connected to somebody in some way, but the things they were doing, I would say the the core of the crew wanted to keep their distance, yeah. but still benefit from what they were doing. Good point. So they were a tough group. That's my mother's neighborhood. Yeah. The, so, so South the, Orange Avenue. Well, did the North Newark guys and Different. the Belver guys, like, did they interact? Did they get along, not get along? I always kind of wondered that. Is it two kind of two different lanes, you know? No beefs, but never beefs. And I will tell you this. At 3 a.m., everybody was together at P.D. White's place, the round table. It was an yeah. after-hours club. Yeah. So we would go in there after everything closed. 3 a.m., it would look like it was 10 p.m. Band. Oh, wow. Bar. Leave there 6, 7 o'clock in the morning. So there was none of that. There was none of that. Interesting. So, so but they okay. watched that neighborhood. The, the neighborhood was good. And listen, they did what they did, but nobody acted up in the South Orange Avenue area, Valesburg area. Now, fast forward to eighties and nineties, we can argue that That's the Casey's that we can argue that the Casey's were probably one of the strongest crews in Jersey. Whether it be the Pernas, the Setas, yep. the Charty. Yeah. Um, Asaturo, his son, those guys. And they're growing on, and they're all cousins and they are all growing trees. Um, yep. Would you agree that they were probably some of the strongest, yes. one of the strongest crews Absolutely. in terms of the cases in North Jersey? Until Castle fucked it all up. 
Yeah, so what was going – now, we always hear the New York side of things. What's the Jersey side of that story? I'm going to assume he ruffled feathers. Yeah. And just had people scared. And uh, that was the reaction. When we heard Tommy <laughs> went bad, man, it was something. But that's that, was a, that was a guy that you would never would imagine would go bad. These are relatives to these. These are all relatives, these guys. Yeah, yeah. That group is relatives. It's not just LCN family. These are relatives. So when Tommy was, Riccardi went bad, yeah. What would they call the machine gun Tommy? So I go into the social club on Rose Valley, and you're like, Machine gun Tommy went bad. I said, What? Everybody's like, What? Wow. Yeah. So, but th- th- that's the thing that people don't get me wrong. Casso was a whale, he was powerful. He had hitters. I mean, yeah. you know, he was a maniac, right? But yeah. these guys weren't slouches either. Tommy Richardi. Uh, no. Asper, these are serious. These were serious guys. These weren't like that. Wasn't the Mickey Mouse Club? But Absolutely the not. Casso had those guys kind of spinning in the wheels. That's pretty crazy. Well, because I guess people loyal to the guys in Jersey got the word to Jersey that this is going on. Yeah. Jersey guys were respected in that in that family. The They're gentlemen too, gentlemen, gentlemen, like you'll never see. Why do you think exactly why Richardi went bad? No way to know. I really don't know. It's hard to say. My, th- my here's my thinking. With anybody that goes bad, I might go off track a little bit here. Yeah, please. You get into this life, right? And when you get into that that life, me, I haven't jaywalked in twenty years. But you get into that life, you go in knowing. That it may be your cousin, your brother, your friend that's going to betray you. You know this already True. going in. You got to take that. You got to take whatever comes your way. You know it's a life of betrayal, right? Yeah. You got to take it. Tommy had to take a bullet if that's what it was. Tommy Riccardi had to take a bullet if that's what it was. If you signed up for it, you yeah. got to go full in. It's hard to say, you know, we can say this all day. From from the back seat. Yeah. But my thinking is, you signed up for this, man. You signed up for this. What do you? And, what do you and again, my yeah. other thinking is, do you want to go to prison for fifty years? And the first thing that comes to my mind with that is the scent of a woman. Yeah. You're never yeah. gonna have the scent of a woman again. What do you? What do you think? <laughs> it's though? crazy. What do you think though? And I would use your argument that like you and I are both Italian American guys, right? We both grew up in New Jersey. And I, you know, stayed away from the life because I just had a mother that, like, 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 religiously would not let me hang out with you. You know, I mean, not that's <laughs> even I was like eighteen coming home. Who are you with? Yeah. Okay, so much. Like, so, like, you know, very tight. Yeah, you know, great mother. Thank God, right? But, but, you know, but, you know, I look at it this way, and a lot of guys are like, you know, exa- exactly that. You know what you signed up for, right? And they're like to me, well. If you were looking at football numbers, what would you do? Well, the truth of the matter is, Tommy, I would never put me or my family in that situation where I was looking at football. I might quit white collar crime. Just kidding. Um, but I would never put myself in that position. If you sign up for that life, brother, there should be some type of, you know what I mean? So I actually agree with you in terms of if you sign up for that. How about when Asatero, who flipped first, Richardi or Asatero? Asatero. And people were like, more shocked at that, right? Because he was – Another another tough dude. I don't know. Yeah, he was, but I didn't you know. That was before me a little bit. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. I knew when Tommy was around. I think uh, Satara was already in Florida. Okay. By yeah. my time. Yeah. But Tommy was a big, uh, that was a big, big surprise. Now, some guys, let me go off a little bit. Some yeah. guys get into this out of uh, survival. Yeah. Some guys get into this out of glamour. There's no glamour in this at all. Yeah, I was involved in this out of survival. My father left. My mother was alone with me and my brother. Yeah, no, nope. my me and my mother, my brother. We had no heat in the house, and I had to figure out ways to, you know, to make it happen. So I guess I'm of an old mindset. No, we we'll you know, because now we pass the statue. What's that? Well, we passed the statue limitations, and we you showed me some. Oh, good. There's no oh, statue. Yeah. Limitations. So you're good now. I'm convicted. I went to I went to jail. I'm convicted. There's no statute. I don't have anything. Well, I, that's what I love. That's why I talk freely. Right. So what rockets did you get involved with? Gambling. 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 
Yeah. Gambling. Bookmaking. You had a half sheet or you were taking books? Handicapping, book? bookmaking, more than half. I, I had 100 guys playing under me. I had yeah. agents under me playing. I had a, just a shitload of action. But I was what good at it. And you got I was good at it. The reason people gravitated to my to my business was, you know, some bookmakers are gamblers, right? Yeah. If you back now, I'm convicted of this. It doesn't make a difference what I say. But if you gambled with me, you got paid on Monday. I didn't wait till Thursday to collect from somebody. I paid you on Monday wow. before I collected. Oh shit! You follow me? So that's how you build up a good like. So obviously, good, if you right. lose, which they always will in the long run. You give them some reinforcement when you win Monday morning. You meet up with your guy and you get you get your cash. Yeah, yeah. But to do that, I'm mean, giving the business aspect because you know you need a lot of cash on hand and a lot of cash flow. Depends who's behind you. Did you? Did if you get there? Your- if they're solid behind you, you're good. Just for an example, I'd have just an example. My package lost ten thousand on a Monday. Somebody's got 10,000 in my hand by Monday, 8 o'clock in the morning. Wow. Not necessarily out of my hands. It yeah. could be. Yeah. But, you know, depends who's behind you. So, how, how, how'd you get pinched? I got pinched. My best friend ratted me out. Get out of here. From, cha- from birth. Oh. My best friend. It's crazy. Did he get any jail time? He got jail time, but it was a little rough for him. That's his county. It's no joke. Wow. Well, county jail, a day in county jail is like six months in any other jail. You know what I mean? Yeah, the county, so you, were, you were in Essex too, right? Yeah, Essex County, yeah. So he he got pinched. He fucked up big time, made huge mistakes. He had young kids gambling with him. And one kid lost money, couldn't pay. Another guy, another young kid kidnapped at the young kid. These are 15-year-old kids. I have no idea this is going on. Jesus. They drop him off in the projects on Baxter Terrace in Newark. He runs into a cop. They pinch the guy that was under me, which was my best friend. And then he rolls on me. Wow. So hold on. So now that you're older and reformed, right? Yes, 100%. Do you forgive your best friend? Absolutely not. And I'm a church-loving man. So, so I'm a God-loving man, but I, I don't know. So how? So so that's why. Okay. So like, some people got on me, right? They're like, well, how can you, you know, have a, a show with an informant, or how can you have so and so on that, so and so on? And my thing was always like, I'm a podcaster. I'm not from that life, so I, I'm not one to judge, right? Yeah. But now, you know, on one end, you want to hear updated stuff. You want to hear first-party content, right? Yeah. Open the horse's mouth, but yeah. the other end. They were, you know, they read it out. They're Tommies, right? Yeah. So where do you land on informants, you know, these days? I'm not a fan. Yeah. I, I, I can't condone it. Yeah. I just, it's just, shit's bad with me, man. I just don't, I don't. Well, I won't say I won't because I won't get into the mob tube mix, but I know for a fact. You I don't care. Like, Listen, no, we can no, talk. No, I know, but I know you told you like to stay away from certain shows. No. Reason, right? No, no. I Listen, I'm okay. What every, what everybody does is what they do. I'm okay with all of it. It's enjoyable to all of us. And yeah. if they say they're not watching, they're lying. They're watching. Yeah. Right. So, I don't know. It's just it doesn't sit well with me. That's all. Now, in retrospect, right? Hindsight's always twenty twenty. Let's call your guy Mister X, right? You and Mister X are rolling hard. Your friends. Were there cracks you didn't you didn't pick up on till later because your friend did you have a blind spot? Maybe he drank too much or got too much. Oh. Like, do you didn't see this coming from nowhere? We were neighborhood guys. We were in diapers together. Oh, shit. I'm 52, but you could say that I'm I got a mind of a 75, 80 year old man, right? Yeah. Because we grew up together, like wow. three houses from each other. When he got pinched, I was sitting on the couch with his mother arranging bail and a lawyer for him. And then, and then something's going on. He's down there way too long, way too long. I made a call to my lawyer and he said, uh, let me check this out. He checked it out. He's like, yeah, you're, he's, you guys are everything from the minute you were born. He's given them to, to current day. Did you have to, did you have to surrender or they came for you? 
I left his mother's house. I talked to my lawyer. He said, you got to, there's a warrant coming now for your arrest. The day we buried my grandfather, I came home from my grandfather's funeral. The oh, day we shit. buried my grandfather, my whole family is at my house from my grandmother to the youngest nephew or niece. And uh, my lawyer says, you know, there's a warrant. There's an active warrant. They're looking to come to your house and tear it apart with your whole family there. I said, what do we do? What do we do? He's like, I'm going to make, a, I'm going to try to make arrangements to have you turn yourself in. Holy he didn't make, he didn't make those arrangements to the prosecutor to turn myself in, but there was an active warrant. He says, you got to leave town for the weekend. I had my fiance at the time and my mother sneaking around while everybody's mourning at my house Jeez. about my grandfather's death. Bring me close to my lawyer's office, and I went to Atlantic City for four days. Why they had to negotiate your surrender? They negotiated my surrender, but there was an active warrant. Uh, so even yeah. though you're, even though you have a negotiated surrender, the warrant is active. You get stopped on Route 22, they can pull you in. Good point. All right. So, I so, in. so you do your time. You get yeah. out. Did you stay with the life, or was that a wake-up call? Being that I was the way I was in that life. Well, first of all, the minute you walk out, you're violating parole. You got to meet with people. There's no, there's no other way. That's a test. You walk out of the jail gates. You yeah. got to meet with people. I met with people. They said, you got a few options here. Come with us hundred percent full time. This is what you do. No questions asked. No turning back. This becomes your life. You can go smooth. You can go work in an office, take your time, do whatever you want to do. And just mingle. Yeah. Or you can walk away from us without any further obligation ever for what you did. And you chose a ladder. I never looked back. Wow. I haven't Jay walked in 25 years. What happened to the guys that said that to you? Who's there? Who's where? Who's away? Who's doing this? Who's doing that? You know how it goes. Yeah. It's but crazy. You no, know, Jersey's a little different sometimes where, and again, I would never give names, but there's guys that I kind of know. Their father was connected. Their uncle was connected. They're made yeah. guys, yeah. and they just like are you know not that they're running around like flaunting anything, but you know they're a made guy. You know they're with I got a few the Cavacantes, and I don't think they ever did any prison time. And they're just they're on Wikipedia. They're here, they're there, but they're just yeah, I think some guys like either get yeah, keep it really low key. I think some guys make it almost boring or not worth it. For the feds to get them. Do you agree with that? Because there's some guys that I know they've been around forever, and I'll talk to you offline, and you'll know some of the names. But they're, like they just never got pinched. Listen, Tommy De Phillips is a great example. He yeah. did three years. He died at eighty something. In his bed. That was Tommy De Phillips, Pee Wee. Yeah. That was, that was two generations down from the from the boot. Yeah. He did three years his whole life, Genovese guy. But so you listen, you were still in the area, right? You're not Lee, uh, you're yeah. in, uh, Belleville. Oh, yeah. When did things start turning? When did New North Newark start turning? What years did the mob start to like start to see its its decline in Jersey? 2000. 2000, Bloomfield Avenue, Newark was we had our restaurants, we had our clubs. I'd say 97, 98, 99, 2000. Around there, everything started to change. Well, the restaurants left. The restaurants left. The clubs left. Yeah, remember in '96 when Italy won the World Cup? Yes. You actually watched it at Gencarelli's back then. It was Vesuvius. We got smashed. We yeah. won. Italy won. We're excited. I don't remember much about it. Fast forward. Last year they won. I'm a little older. Had a little party at my house. Wow. One small part of me is like, oh, maybe we should go to North Newark to buy a little fireworks. Oh, yeah. And I heard, but now there wasn't much going on. Like obviously Brooklyn did something, but Italy did something. Uh, certain neighbors did something, but North Newark had like really nothing. Versus '96, fireworks, the police, no, no, no. No, totally police different. Were, police weren't shutting the streets because totally was different. Something. They were shutting the streets because they were celebrating. And totally was, different. Yeah. So last year it was like, eh, I don't think people gave a shit to be honest with you. So listen, we have Vesuvius restaurant. We had Michelangelo's restaurant. We had Giovanni's restaurant. We had cafes. Everything was there. Now it's all gone. It's all gone. What a shame. So what about, um, okay, so 
you know, you're a smart guy, you've been around, let's kind of fast forward a little bit. Now, the Genovese, for the most part, and a lot of that same crew migrated down, Genovese is still very strong in New Jersey, and they're like decentralized, and they're quiet. I don't remember, when was the last Genovese jersey bust? I don't even remember. Long time ago. A so long time ago. So they're still strong. But where do you think they get guys from now? Whether it be the Cavaconte, whether it be like, where do they get guys from now? It's hard to say. Who would even want to be involved in this mess? Yeah, it's hard to say where they come from. Listen, there's no good ending. You're doing life on the installment plan at the very least. Good point. Good point. All right, You're life on the installment plan. But there's always going to be somebody. There's always going to be some action to be taken, right? Good. I just can't understand how you can even operate today. When I did back in my time. Pay phones, driving, meeting, this, that, the other thing. But today, there's a camera on every telephone pole. Uh, how do you even operate? I, I can't even imagine how you operate. You're getting pinched no matter what you do. Yeah. Now, I'm going to read the questions that came from the community first. Okay. Then I'll jump to the questions on the chat. And don't be shy about Super Chat if you'd like. And also, I have money to cash out below. Yeah, Daddy's got to eat somehow, right? Um, but it's a question that I have. And I never really knew this stuff, but like I heard Patterson was a pretty strong Genovese area. Was was Patterson strong in your time? No. That was probably I don't think so. Okay. Well, they might have migrated over to Garfield, Lodi, all of that stuff, but I heard like streaky gatto and the gatto. Yeah, yeah, right? that area. That's Lodi. Yeah. I think I it's a little before it. your time, right? Well, it's it's regional. Yeah. You gotta remember this north, north, Belleville, Nutley area is a regional thing. All right, so here's one question I have, and this may be a wheelhouse or not. We kind of kind of touch on this. How was it a Jersey crew brought back into the fold after the Amuso and Casso issued the wipe out of the New Jersey edict and later went on the can? So after Casso went away, what was left of the Casey crew? Was it so strong that they kind of, with the guys, Richardi and then Esther was flipping, what, like, were they a shadow of themselves? How was the Casey crew post Castle era? I think they were always strong. After that, all after all of that dust cleared, they still had a strong, strong presence. Got it. A guy we don't talk about much, who was a very powerful guy. Again, we talk about the most powerful guys you never heard of. Was Kino Fumara. Yes. Yeah. The most powerful New Jersey guy in the last 30 years, would you say? Crazy. Crazy guy. Would you say he's one of the most powerful guys in the last 30 years? Absolutely. 100%. So, some say he was on the panel running the Genovese when he passed. He's interesting. Absolutely. I don't know if you know this. When he got out of jail, he moved to Long Island. Yes, I do know that. And um, he goes, there's an article in the New York Times that the FBI checked to see his gravesite body to make sure he did die. Oh, my he God. Being clever and tricking them. He also was related to former New Jersey governor, Chris Christie, who was open about visiting him in prison in Texas. He did visit him, and that's a cousin, I believe. Oh, sure. Uh, or an in-law. Cousin or an in in law, but he did. Yeah, that, that's true. I, I can answer. This, but I'll run this by you first. Did the Eagle Riggy have sons that were made into the Brigada? If so, concurrently involved in the life or perhaps in the can? Thanks. Again, that's Elizabeth um, Kenilworth, but I think he had a son, Manny. Manny and, John Jr. I think Vincent. And Vincent, Vinny, yeah. Yeah, and all. I, I don't know the status of them, but yeah. The, so the, this is on Wikipedia, so I'm not saying anything other. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I'm not like. Yeah, yeah. There's no but uh, them three allegedly became made. Uh, Manny passed in 2016. I actually met Manny at my cousin's wedding. A great right. guy. Great guy. So he okay, real quick. When yeah. the, day I, the day I had to go on the lamb, I was hiding out. I was at a friend of mine's mother's house. And I was watching TV, drinking wine. It was a day that uh, I think that John Ricky either got sentenced or indicted. The weekend that I was on the lamb, that was in 96, I believe. Ninety-five. Yeah, indicted in late, like mid to late nineties. Ninety-six, I think it was. And then he was supposed to get out, and then he had to do another yeah. clean. Was so he was on the news while I was on the lamp. It was crazy to see. Yeah, and I, I, I this is a story I'm not proud of. Um, he was going to get out, and then his former son-in-law, Sean Richards, who screwed around on his daughter and left with his protection program with his sister. I met him through somebody. And he hung out in Jersey. He said his name was Jimmy. I didn't know that was him. And I was actually related to the Riggies through marriage. 
And I was like sickening that I sat down and broke rubber with this guy. And he was a wow. reason. You're um, now, man. You know? So hold on. I just got to check. Um, let me go. Questions. We talked a little about Richardi. Um, let me just see. Yeah, I think part of the strength, and it was a little before your time, what made the Genevieve strong was um, they had the mayor Newark uh, in their back pocket, wasn't it? At, at Adonazio. You had Adonazio. That's in the 70s, 80s. So. I think he was a main guy as well. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if he was. Now, this is an area that I'm telling you I'm fascinated with, especially in Hudson County. Which of the families do you think are still present in Newark, Hoboken, and Jersey City today? You don't have to say names, but which families do you think are still present? I mean, I can't say, I don't know, but I can't see why not everybody is. I, I don't I don't recall Columbo's ever being too big in Jersey, in my personal opinion. How about yourself? Know. No, they weren't. Yeah. And then I was, um, you know, because we, we were doing a show one night and we talked about like like uh, Hudson County, how there was much less wise guys than you think. And then somebody turned me on to, again, a Genovese crew out of the, out of Bayonne. And I looked it up, and they turned out to be, um, uh, you know, pretty, pretty, um, pretty powerful. I, I can't uh, see why they all wouldn't be operating. I mean, I wouldn't. Yeah. Can't see why they would, but I can't see why they wouldn't either. Now, this may be more of a consulting question versus firsthand, but one of the things that really was strong is with the unions. Yes. You know, labor racketeer, yes. racketeer uh, they controlled a lot of the, the local unions in Jersey. How did that work? You know, give us kind of like your perception how Riggy and his guys patrol so, the construction trade in Jersey. See, my 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 a lot of guys got into the union, so I guess they call it corruption, but we didn't know any difference. So yeah, I don't know. You know, Sal needs a job. Yeah, I'm in the union. I, I, it's what we did. I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what union corruption is unless it's on a higher level than what we would know. Yeah. You know, most of the people I would know would be the blue collar aspect, right? Good point. Good They're going to work on the on the docks or the carpenters or whatever it might be. So we wouldn't know that aspect. Yeah, if you look at it in Jersey, in the unions, who comes up? The Genovese again, and they were very big in the ILA and still are. So no, sure, those guys, absolutely. How, how, this, I'm most fascinated with this too. You may or may not know, but. How did the Philly mob set up a crew based in North Jersey? Yeah. I know they did. And did they have issues with New York families operating North Jersey? I know part of why Tony Caponegro was killed, other than killing Bruno, was that was because he wanted to sit down against Bunzi Thierry involving gambling interests years prior. Yeah, the, the Philly had Philly crew had a uh, Philly had a crew in North Jersey. Yes. Right. Where were they Newark, everybody. Never an issue. Everybody was here. Well, there was like seven families in Newark. The five everybody was here except for the, the Cavalcante oh, family. Really. families. And maybe the Columbos weren't. Maybe the was a little bit. But everybody was here. Everybody got along. There was never beefs between the guys. Everybody really knew each other. So a lot of guys grew up together. These are guys that are older than me, grew up together, but ended up in different factions, different crews, different families. But everybody got along. Like I said, on Saturday night, everybody would be at the same club. Interesting. No now, issue. Now, when John, when, when John, uh, John Johnny Boy D'Amato was accused of being gay, I think it was by his girlfriend, yeah. um, ironically. Do um, yeah. you think there's any truth to that, or it might have been like a false wire? What years were they? Swinging years? Who knows what they did back then? They were freaking crazy. Good point. You know? Any information, and I don't know if you want to show this anyway, any information about murder Genovese acting capital, Larry Ritchie? Just that he was, uh, that was a crazy day. I remember when it happened. Yeah. I remember when he disappeared. And then they found him behind the diner. I think they found him behind the diner. Was that the one the guy? I think on I think in on Route Twenty Two maybe they found Wait, him behind the diner. I was found in uh, the Huck Finn Diner in Union. Yeah, I think so. And then I remember Julio, that. And then DeGiulio got killed. He was a big Genovese guy too. What yeah, happened? John, him? John DeGiulio. Yeah. Yeah, they found like, one of them. I don't know. And I got. I know they found. I remember. I remember when Ricky disappeared, 
And then I remember when they found him in the trunk. I think it was in the trunk behind a diner, like a week I later. I think it was a Huck Finn diner by me in Union, New Jersey. Yeah. Insane. Crazy. Um, any boot versus longies info or guest to chat about that? I guess they think you're 100, but um, no, I didn't know AMG that. I, I just teed you up as a mob guy talking about history, so they didn't know the, the time uh, the time of reference. But Longy was uh, Longy's wo woman? Longy, yeah. 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 I guess they did business together. The boot, his presence is still here. He's still here in some type of spirit. I'll yeah. tell you why. The church I go to, as soon as you walk in and you look to the right, the first stained glass window in St. Lucie's Church is from Mr. and Mrs. Fiardo. Wow. It's right there. Then I'll tell you what happened. What? Yeah, please. St. Lucie's Church. I, do you know of St. Lucie's Church? It's on 7th Avenue. It's in Newark. It's in the North Newark. Newark. Now, oh, yeah, yeah. That was the that was the Italian epicenter, basically, a little Italy. Yeah. So Joe DiMaggio used to come there and you know, all all celebrities. So uh the church ran short of funds when they were finishing up some work. It was like they were like a million short. They were trying to raise money, trying to raise money. An anonymous donor donated the last $1 million. They don't know if it's Richie the Boots family or Joe DiMaggio's family. Oh, shit. They that finished the job, and it looks beautiful. But they, uh, it was, in, what do you call it? You know, um, you know, anonymous. Anonymous donor. Interesting. All right. So, uh, did you know the legendary Ray Tango? The name ring a bell? Name does, but you know, before me. Yeah, I, I think it's like to get roll up in a wheelchair and you never know no teeth and but now we really shoot our shot, you know. Um, all right, so we went through. Um, somebody asked about the Buffalino family. Yeah, that was like Northeast Pennsylvania. Yeah, yeah. I think it was guys in Jersey, right? No, well, no, well, no, no. Interesting. All right. So we're gonna do a few things. I'm gonna drop a link below. That's what I like about this. Obviously, you gotta know who you are. I can't have random in, random mm -hmm. in. But if you want to come in and join the stream, um, if any of the four horsemen you obviously invited or anybody else, feel free if you want to join in. Yeah, that was a Huck Finn Diner, the Huck Finn Diner on uh, Morris. Route twenty two, right? Was oh, it number twenty two? Right, right off it. In, yeah. Uh, and um, Morris, Morris Savage. Yeah, 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 yeah. Marky, Marky Marciano supposedly used to go to the Rivera Club a lot in Elizabeth, New Jersey. Um, I'm sure a lot of the wise guys there. Well, let me ask you a question. If you stayed in a life, do you think you, you would have got, like, how long do you think it would have got, you know, not to get a crystal ball, but okay. to get proposed for your stripe? You think you were a few years away? It would have been a long haul? Could have been easier? Like, you know, if you had a crystal ball. I don't think it would have been a long haul at all. Somebody asked me yesterday, uh, Fatball Sicilian on the show, and not that I'm an expert in any way, but just doing what I do with a lot of interviews. Um, he goes, do you think it's easier to get made now than it was maybe 20 years ago? Uh, it's hard to say. It's hard to say. I don't know. It's hard to say. You know, I'm not involved in it now, so I don't know. Right now, it's a monetary thing, I'm assuming. Yeah. No back point. then, it was a little different. No point. Back then, it was turning into a monetary thing also, though. Yeah. I think in the 90s, it started to turn into that, you know, you don't have to clip anybody type of shit. Because, you know, that listen, murder brings nothing but bad. If you stick to just gambling, maybe loan sharking or racketeering, this and that and the other thing, you can go a long way for a lot of years. The only thing is Rico, it hurts you. But for little pinches like gambling, this, that, the other thing, you know, three years, five years. And yeah. Listen, I still say he's doing life on the installment plan, but, you know, you're not looking at 30, 40 years off the bat. Good point. Vinny Palermo, he was, um, although he was a Jersey. Um, that was a big shock. Yeah. A big shock. I remember when that happened. Uh I was with some friends of his. I was in uh, Long Beach Island. I was with some friends of his. We were outside barbecuing, and they're like, Vinny Ocean went bad. Interesting. You know, when you just hear these names that go bad, and you're like, what the, how, what, how, 
how? <laughs> don't even, you can't even can't even comprehend it. Yeah, I was gonna say, say you know, he was um, alleged to be the inspiration for Tony Soprano, and although he was the Cavacante, he was in New York most of the time, right? Yes, Queen, uh, Queens on the strip clubs. Yeah, I think Queens. Yeah, Eagles or whatever. Did you know Vincent Cazzarelli, Ross, Rossmore Pharmacy in Belleville? Of course, of course, of course. They're still there. Cazzarelli's still here, and Rossmore's still here. Yeah. Ray Tango's in his 60s, not that old. But everybody yeah. knows Ray Tango drop a line. Um, everybody has a different stuff. Tommy's very honest. He's not one of those guys that claim to know somebody when he doesn't. No. Oh, he does. That's it. Um, let me see. Queens Boulevard, yeah. Um, Wiggles, yeah, Wiggles, that's right. In the ocean was Bobby Lucille's son law. Interesting. Uh, yeah, I, I heard of Bobby Lucille before. Um, most cars now have monetary people for some reason that the mob is gone. This is not uh, anymore. Most are making. It won't be gone. Why would it be gone? There's some money to be made on the street. Well, let, well, well, let, well let, let me ask you a question. Now that, like, it's a little less violent, right? Um, I'll keep that up in a second. A little less violent. And little less killing, and it's about money, so the bids theoretically shouldn't be as long. If the younger Tommy could have got into this mob, would it have been worth it for you, or still not worth it? The old way. Yeah. I loved it. I loved the way it was. I went to the social club. I, you know, I loved it. Yeah. I loved what it was. I was in harm's way many times. I could tell you, you know. Okay, there was a bar in Belleville called uh, New Plus, right? Okay. I worked at my cousin's pizzeria. I was like nine years old. I was like the little kid C in Bronx Tale looking into the bar. Yeah. And wow, I'm like, holy shit, look at that. I want to be like that someday. You just think of it. You think of it, you know? And then, and then fast forward years later, I'm having a meeting in there and not knowing how I'm going to come out. Um, I'm telling you, Anthony Arrelato, who was on the previous show, said it best. He goes, people over 50 look at the mob differently than people under 50. So I'm yeah. 45, you're 52. We're not that far in age. But I didn't catch those golden years. I didn't catch that even in Elizabeth. So yeah. like, I didn't have like a super good representation uh, of you know, what, what the mob was about. Well, I, I saw mean, it. It was front and center for me. I mean, so, um, it was here. Being in Newark, right, and I went to yeah. school in Newark in the nineties. A lot of gangs. Um, did the, did LCN work with gangs in Newark, or they kind of kept separate? Kept separate. Yeah. No, no issues. I mean, when I went away, when I was in Texas County Prison, there was everybody. Nobody. Nobody bothered. Sam the plumber's grandfather was a doctor. I'm not surprised. Sam the plumber's name, I don't know if, nickname, was also the Count. And he swore he came from a bloodline of royalty, and supposedly it was true. And he was a serious guy. And he, he supposedly sat on the commission. If you look at the um, yeah. great book for those that want to go deep dive in Jersey, the Cavacante tapes, they called his bluff. They wanted him to testify, and he said no. He goes, well, we're going to release your tapes. He goes, you would never do that because you need them for your cases. If you release it, they're useless. Uh, and what do they do? They released it. You know, Paterno, I think Paterno was before Cabert and them. Even before that? Okay. Did you hang out at the gatehouse? Of course. Where was that? West Orange. Yeah. I. So I keep getting in the comments, and I was going to get to it, about mob activity. Was it South Orange? Well, South Orange was, uh, well, the campaigns moved. The campaigns moved over to South Orange after they got out of Valesburg. Yeah. Yeah, because it's the same road. Yeah. South Orange Avenue goes from Valesburg into South oh, Orange, yeah, so yeah, yeah. they were there. Got it. These were there. Okay, we're gonna Brooklyn guy come in. Hey. Hey, pal. So, uh, <laughs> so Tom, gonna meet, introduce you to part of the Four Horsemen. He got Brooklyn guy, Vinny Bronco, and Joey the Hat Pay. Good show <laughs> last night, guys. Good show last night. Thank you. Hey, Tom. Hey, pal. So, Vinny, why don't you start it off? You probably have a shitload of questions or comments or what are your thoughts on Tommy? Yeah, uh, Tony Soprano. <laughs> do you think it was the plumber or do you think it was Tommy Boy Borato? I think it was Richie the Boo. Oh, okay. Or his okay. son. Yeah, because yeah. Borato actually went to a shrink, didn't he? I don't 
know if that's true, man. I don't know about Richie Boo. He, he had. Know, I don't. I don't see that happening. But hey, you never know. Who went? Somebody did go. Uh, I thought it was Tommy Boy. Uh, no, not Tommy Boy. Who the hell was it? Tony Richie, Boy. Tony Richie's Boy. Son is Tony Boy. That's possible. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you're right. It was I, I Richie the Boot. I can't see it. Not many noticed, but Richie the Boot was an orphan. Really? He doesn't have a bloodline. Richie the Boot was an orphan in Italy, and he came over here as an orphan. They don't know who his parents are. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. I didn't know that. To ask, oh, answer M M M Emmanuel is the public question. Um, I think the Fred Weiss murder got to get order. I think the Riggy, and then I think the Riggy gave it to Vinny Ocean to execute i think i don't know about that but i looked that up. i read the book i should know um let's see there we always running it okay a statement tommy what's up bro how are you hey, doing, my good? Man. good i have a question who was the character jackie april in regards to uh, uh, the jersey mob it could be so many. Yeah, because I know some of them you could, you know, it's parallel to it could be a so many street guy, but that whole setup can be so many around here in this area, this Newark area. It's yeah. hard to say. Guys, Is you that way you're from Newark? Go any further, you have to understand something. I never you know, I can't give you anything as far as current names, anything like that. I never cooperated. So that's good. We neither have we. <laughs> yeah. No, me. I never cooperated. So I just assumed if you're on the show, you cooperated. I know, just but kidding. because that's that's what it seems like. But I went away for for this stuff. You know, I was in prison for this stuff, and uh, my reputation is that because I was, you know, I never never broke. So yep. some things I can answer, some things I can't answer. Insight into history, I have it. It's in my brain forever. I'm from here, you know. And so I you're from broke. Newark. Yeah, Belleville, Newark. I was born in Newark. What's up with uh, the guy? He killed um, Angelo Bruno. He was from New York. What's his name? Uh, Tony Caponegro. Yeah, he was from Newark. Yeah. They killed was that, him right he was a little before your time? or Yeah, but they killed him right after that. Yeah. He was because, a pretty tough fella from what yeah, I've heard. Yes. Yeah. If he didn't do that... He would have been all, might have been all right, but is it true that Genevieve tricked him into doing it? That's you know, what the, it, say, it, the words were cut, could have gone in either way, you know what I mean? So it's hard. Listen, the lifestyle is a manipulative lifestyle, right? So they may have said it because they actually wanted him out of the way. Who knows? <laughs> it's hard to say. Well, so, what was that? What was you know, now that history passed. What was the real knock on Bruno? He didn't want to get into drugs, or what was what was the knock? Why did he get killed? I don't think there was any real beef, to be honest with you. I think they should. I think they wanted to move him out of the way to get into current times. I'm gonna guess. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, yeah. He was a wealthy mistake, guy, which I think is a mistake because you need both. You kind of need both. You need to stay in touch with the old world guys. And you need to mingle and and earn in the new world way. So, it probably would have been beautiful. But when you have egos, and in this day and age, or twenty years ago, day and age, you kind of have that that uh, spoiled brat mentality. Mm -hmm. Move matter away. The opera generation, me, me, Listen, me, me. Flipping, flipping Paul Castellano obviously was kind of had to be done to save a lot of people, right? A yeah. lot of people. I mean, that would have been a disaster if they didn't take him out. There would have been probably 12 guys gone if they didn't take out Paul Castellano, I would assume. Because he was well, going to wipe out that probably. Just out of curiosity, why do you say that? Because they were keeping up with the times the street guys would have took over? What do you think? Yeah, well, they were. They were. They didn't turn over tapes to him. They were. Oh, yeah. They were. You know, they're back door. Oh, the other right. side. Yeah, 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 yeah. The yeah, other side. Not. But I will. But. Everybody did well on both sides of the pond when Gotti took over. Yeah. He was a good a good presence for, for the guys over here in Belleville. Uh, a lot of us did well over here. Not not just in the illegitimate, in legitimate also. Guys that need to work got jobs, regular hardworking guys got jobs. 
Yeah. I remember when I, after I came out, you know, I need to work. I was working and uh, they put me to work. They put me to work overnight in construction. I was working a day shift, a regular job, and they put me to work at night. That came Tommy, from me. That let, came me from ask, me. let me ask you a question. I know a, a lot of the reason that not only the tapes that Ruggiero and the lawyers wouldn't give up was that the guys were starving under Castellano. He was keeping everything himself. Do you think that the Chico and Gravano go against him if they're not starving under him? It's hard to say. I think if it came from Gotti, he's a very strong presence, man. It's very hard mm -hmm. to, if it's coming from him, it's yeah. very, very hard to refuse that guy. Yeah. It's one yeah. thing to kill a boss, but to kill that a boss true. in Manhattan, you know, rush hour, you know. What, you, know I mean? you know how many people were on the streets at five five thirty on a a Monday? I mean, Christmas shopping, yeah. Christmas, exactly. I mean, that right now, really. Fast, fast forward three years after that, five ten years after that, everybody's doing good on both sides of the pond. I mean, yeah. the the river, the Hudson River. Yeah. So, I don't know. Gotti had a relationship with the guy uh, John Amato or John D'Amato. Well, that was the, that was allegedly uh, gay. Yeah, that was the, the Cavalcanti guys. Yeah, he exactly. Had a, yeah. He had a really strong presence here in Belleville too. I mean, yeah. Yeah, a uh, Brooklyn, I had a Brooklyn guy in Joe. Uh, Bobby Cabert was a, a whale on on the Jersey side and was Gotti's emissary in Jersey. Very powerful captain. Very powerful captain. Yeah, with absolutely. The, um, with the Cambinos. Is that a name that you guys hear from the New York side? I never did. Really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's interesting. You could be like 10 miles away and there are 20 miles or 30 miles. And God can be super power, powerful, but you never heard him because he's out of the borough, you know? I'll tell you how I'll tell you how how strong Gotti's presence was. So Bobby Cabert came from Belleville, went over there, did a hit for them. He got made with them guys, with those guys, or he got upped. I don't know if he got made or got upped. And uh, came time for trial. Bobby Cabert, who was from our neighborhood, he was the guy, he was John Gotti's guy in Jersey, was in our neighborhood in Belleville. He got offered 10 years. And Gotti said, nobody takes a plea. And they followed him, and Cabert got life. He got convicted and died in jail. He got offered 10 years? Got offered 10 years. Holy shit. And John says, we don't admit anything. This is a new thing. We don't admit anything. And uh, our neighborhood guy went away for life. Wow. Yeah. Just to answer Bandit Dane, um, the uh, guys on the Castellano, you got to remember, they weren't with Gotti. That were the Brooklyn, Staten Island guys. Right. Gravano right. hardly knew Gotti, only from bouncing around. They were right. starving on the Castellano. He was giving yeah. everything away. Yeah. So my question was, do you think that Gravano and the Chico, who was a loyal guy to Chico, would have backed Gotti? if they were doing fine with Castellano. I think some of it was they weren't doing fine with Castellano. And when they waited, they thought they were better with Gotti. But I'm gonna now, go back, I'm gonna go back go to this. If John gets four guys in a room, he's like a, what do you call it? When they they, they, they manipulate your brain, what's it called? The, uh, you know. Oh, I know, I know what you mean. I can't think like, of it either. Uh, <laughs> persuasive, he's persuasive. Yeah. Yeah, you can't. You just you're walking out of here doing whatever he wants you to do. Someone yeah. told me once that if he was standing in front of you in five minutes, he could convince you he wasn't there. What's that called? The the guy, the you know, they put yeah, you on the <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I think they went with them because they realized he's got to do this, and he probably would pull it off. And if he does, where are they going to be? Because I think most of the guys that were at Sparks, they were Gotti's people. So, you know, I, I think around. that plays into it because, my you know, opinion, they were smart opinion, enough to know. In my opinion, you have to be around. You have to be around. You got to yeah. be a presence. You got to be around. If you're not around, things are just going to happen so fast under your shoes. You're not even going to know what's going to hit you. You got to be around. And you got to be, you know, you can't be a boss. You got to be a leader, right? Yeah. That's in legitimate worlds. That's in every world. You have to be a leader, not a boss. So Gotti was a little bit of both. But yeah. no one's gonna no one's gonna go against what Gotti said. I'm telling I'll say it a hundred times. Five guys in the room. 
He's going to get your brain to think the way he wants you to think. The only thing that bothered me about Gotti is that he wouldn't let anybody take plea deals, and that that's that's a little tough. Yeah, you know, when you're going into the '90s and you can't take plea deals, in the '80s you can't take. Plea, it's a little tough. You know, there's a presence. We know there's Cosa Nostra. You know, there's a mafia. What are you hiding? You yeah. know what I mean? Take take your plea, do your time, come out. Tommy, ten, what do you, ten years state. The guy would have been out in seven years, eight years. Yeah. Tommy, what do you think of the story Gravano said, which is odd? I wouldn't believe Gotti would allow this when he said that he told Tommy Bellotti's brother, even though we killed your brother, you're safe. I can't yeah. imagine Gotti would be okay with that, knowing that there's a threat out there that I killed your brother. You know I killed your brother. Do you believe that story, that it's Gotti risk, knew? It's risk versus reward. I don't know. That's a very tough one. Yeah. But, but I said it, like I said it before, if you're loyal to this life, this goes with it. These are the nuts and bolts. Mm -hmm. I saw the nuts and bolts from the inside. I lived it. I know the nuts and bolts. I went into rooms knowing that I would possibly not come out of these rooms, that my own family was going to knock me off in a social club. So the point is, you know it going in. So, yeah, there's a possibility that they would kick that. But then emotion takes over, so it's very tough. I guess, yeah, you're right. Yeah. And that John Gotti, as far as his relationship with the uh, media, you know, everybody says he was posing for the cameras. Yep. Basically, it's a gift and a curse because yep. being out there like that, he got locked up. But I think the fact that they were always up his ass is why it would be difficult to kill him, you know, because the feds were watching him so yep. tight. Wow. Would you feel comfortable you know, going to Mulberry Street or anywhere, you never know who's in the car watching you guys. So it was like the gift and a curse, I believe. Okay, but when you sign up for that, you know that this is a possibility. They tried to kill him at the social club. They blew up the car. Right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. some young buck is going to take that order. He's going to take that order and do it. Yeah. It's crazy, right? But it, it is real. That if somebody wants to make their bones, they're going to kill that guy. Listen, mm -hmm. murder brings, in my opinion, murder just brings, it breeds um, cooperation. Because you got life sentences, man. Who wants to go away for life, for the cause? Meanwhile, that guy is going to try and bang your wife or your girlfriend. <laughs> they're not going to send money to your family. I don't care who you are. They're not. I said it to Tom before. The scent of a woman. For the rest of your life, you're never really going to have the scent of a woman for the rest of your life, for the cause. It's hard to it's hard to do, man. In that movie with uh, Armand Asante, the Gotti movie from '96, yeah, HBO one. Yeah, he he. One of the best part. I don't know if it's true. Was when he told Joe Piney when Bob Piney told him, you know, there are there's a young 19 year old in Sheepshead Bay now gets the ear of a couple of captains, yeah. and you get a bullet. You have to have rules. True. Now, I could see an old timer probably telling him that. This is true. This is that's, the last. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, crazy. It's true, but it's crazy. Do you think the Jersey guys were different mentality than the New York guys? Like, do you think they just carried themselves a little differently? I, I just think the Jersey guys were more familial. Okay. These were so, neighborhood guys that grew up since they were in diapers. Like I told Tom before, the guy that turned on me, we were we changed diapers together. We were, right. we were babies together. So I think more of the Jersey guy, you know, New York is enormous, right? It's huge. Right. Other crews are coming into other crews, right, that didn't know New each Jersey other. Jersey was strong because all the neighborhoods, all, everybody knew everybody. Everybody grew up together. Right. Every family was here, but everybody grew up together. Everybody knew each other. When you start mixing crews... I hear them saying, you know, this one went with the Staten Island crew. This one went with the Brooklyn crew. You don't know these people. You're absolutely right. So the heart is gone. Why am I going to take a bullet for this guy? I don't even know this guy. Right. You know, you That's should, true. but you're not. Yeah, but then, then so let's ask this. It, it's, we're going to, in five years, eight years, whatever, we're going to be in the 100th anniversary of the modern day Cosa Nostra, right? Yeah. And we go back before the Black Hand. And then these societies go back 400 years. These, these societies haven't been, you know, there's been challenges back then. There's been famines, there's been pandemics, there's been other stuff, right? Even out law enforcement, 
why is it so much different now, one generation? I'll ask Tommy first and then the Brooklyn guy and then Joe, but one generation later, two generations later, it's falling like a house of cards. What systemically changed? Glamour. Glamour. Big houses, $800,000 houses, Mercedes Benz. Yeah. Rolex watch, all of that shit fucked everything up. You got to be humble, live simply. If they were able to do that and go back to what it was, they can do it. But now, today, you can forget it. Everybody's jealous of each other. And uh, I was thinking about this before. I was in on my stoop um, by my alleyway, and I'm saying, who's really going to come to the stoop and give me 20000 That could be theirs. They're going to say they got robbed for ten. <laughs> and they're going to go buy a Rolex. It's just greed. What do you think, Vinny? Yeah, I think it's greed. I think that uh, the sense of neighborhood is gone. Yeah. I think you look in the old time. You know, you go to any neighborhood. Now, go to Bensonhurst. Try to find three Italian families that live on the block. Uh, it, it has changed now. And the sense of neighborhood has changed. And when you lose the neighborhood, you lose the fabric of what you're about. And I think that, right. like you said, you have guys coming from the Bronx that you may have heard of once, you never met them. If your best friend, Tom, that you grew up with can rat on you, what the hell do you think someone that didn't grow up with you is going to do? Right. My yeah, best yeah, friend. Yeah. Right. Right. George Fresalone. Yeah, he was, a, he was a guy around here, George Fresalone. That was a big shock when he went bad. Yes. But that was a, he was a Scarfo guy before Scarfo, Bruno guy, George Fresalone. I saw that pop up. Yeah. Now, now, now um, Joe B, what do you think? You agree? Because remember, he's been around for hundreds of years, and the two generations have collapsed. Tommy's saying it's it's um, mm -hmm. you know the the, the glitz and the glamour. Then he added that there's not a sense of neighborhood. Anything else you can add? Well, I think that um, like, how many full Italians are there? I mean, like, I married an Italian woman. Yeah. But the intermingling of nationalities, well, now you might be Italian and Chinese or Lebanese, you know what I mean? And, yeah. you know, I think that takes you out of the run. I mean, you have to be a full-blooded Italian. I know they said they changed it, but I don't know about that. So in that case, there's a lot less Italian people. Full yeah. Italian. Interesting. I'm a perfect example. My family's all Italian, right? I'm only one of maybe three that got involved in this mess. Yeah. My grandparents, you know, grew up in the pro you know, public housing and everything, but tried to make sure that their kids now, did now, not get they, involved in this mess. Now, we can agree that um, um, Bannon is right. Definitely not uh, a life of married people. Hey, uh, U.S. Arm Army Combat Medic, always thank you for your service. We are able to do this podcast because of guys like you. So it's a sincere thank you for your service. Um, so with that being said, though, is I was looking at the parallel of Italian Americans in, in the U.S. And as a lot, you know, although there's some pockets that we can improve, we've been very fortunate as a culture within the U.S. and we worked our ass off to get where we are, right? But why did like the Italian American culture prosper while the mob died? The mob didn't die, nor did the Italian American success. They both flourished. But what I'm saying, flourished. what I'm saying though, is wouldn't like let's just say again, I get to shift for this all the time, but like if, if Italian Americans became more successful, became a lawyer, who became a doctor, who became a judge, who who is wearing cool baseball hats, whatever's going on, right? Um, whatever's going on. Wouldn't like wouldn't they make it more of a system of getting to those people in the professional class? You know, you're still gonna need your muscle, you're still gonna need your money, guys. You're still gonna need, but might as well indoctrinate into the fabric of society to make it even stronger. That's my question, to you guys. Why don't you guys think that happened here in the U.S.? Well, let me just add one thing real quick. Someone commented, J.M., and he said Italian and Chinese. Come on, pal. Okay. <laughs> Where is Tommy Agro in this chat room here? Find out who his main girl was. Tommy Agro, the maid guy, you know, the guy, tough guy, Joe Dogs. See who he who his main chick was. 
I guarantee you, she's a lot closer to Chinese or Asian than you think. So, I mean, you know. Joe, it, Joe it, they, 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 they need to tell you when you start your channel, it's you know, watch what you say, even though it's you're probably right. They get on every word. Am I right, Vinny? <laughs> oh, you yeah. he's got he he's gonna have trolls before he starts his channel. Oh, <laughs> They're just gonna be waiting for it, like the grand opening to get on That's there. Great. That's great. And I what do you. I tell you guys when you say start a channel? I said, I don't know if I could take all the abuse these guys get. You can. <laughs> wait till wait till Bandit Dane gets a hold of your channel. Oh again. boy. Tommy, I, I also think the mob has suffered a lot with the Italian Americans doing well now. Honestly, is because you don't have a lot of good point young Italian Americans yeah. now from the mob that have fathers that were in the mob. Good I think point. a lot of the generation now they didn't have family in the mob, so yeah. they didn't see that Omerta. They didn't see their dad raising them, schooling them. These yeah. are just guys that hung out. They didn't have mob connections, so they weren't they weren't schooled the way you guys were schooled. Yeah. I think it's a matter of versus survival versus glamour. Yeah. So for me, it was survival. Not a lot of guys my age had to go through the survival that I had to go through, helping my mother, this, that, the other thing. But, uh, you know, when you inherit it versus having to do it, it's a whole different situation. You're more hungry. Yeah. yeah. You're more hungry. You're not as greedy. Yes, you enjoy the fruits that go along with, the, you know, the old gotten gains, but survival which was what all the old timers had you know we talk about these guys as we saw them as captains bosses doing well they really came from dirt they really came from dirt so how do you hurt a guy like john Gotti who wore two different sneakers when he was a kid how do you hurt him you can't hurt him yeah, yeah. he died chained to a bed because you know humble less than humble right so I think glamour destroyed it. I think anybody that brings their kids into it has to have their head examined. <laughs> One story I remember when uh, when John Gotti apparently said to Vinny the Chin that he, his son got made or something like that. Yeah. And, Vinny and, and he made his son. Hear that. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry to hear that. Yeah, but he made his son, though. That's the thing. Made his, his son. His son, Vinny Esposito. That's yeah, who's hypocritical yeah. about it. Because yeah, he got his sons involved. Right. The just life like God he did. You the, know life they, is, the life is full of hypocrite. Well, hypocrite. You know, yeah. and this is public info. Esposito yeah. got yeah. caught in his $20 million townhouse. Yeah. And I know. They found the list of Jersey guys in the Genovese faction, old and new, and were current. I don't know wow. if you guys knew that. Looked that up. Insane crazy it's, it's also a smart move what god he did because he figured he's going to jail how he needs someone to come and get the messages and send it back out to the troops you know it's his son so he would be on that list you know it's not like uh the underboss is gonna go to marion illinois and you know talk with Gotti. so i think that has something to do with it as well Absolutely, Joe. I know. I know a brothers that one brother doesn't really care for the other brother, but when he was going to jail, he had the brother made, so it protected his interests in the street. Exactly. Yeah. It disappears real about, fast. Somebody asked about Tony Pro. Did they mean Tony Pro or Tony Proto? No, Tom, probably Tony Provenzano. He was out of Jersey too, right? Provenzano was. Yeah. So was Tony Proto. He was a Gambino guy. Okay. Uh, if you could let us know which Tony Pro and we'll. Do our best to answer. Because we, we call Tony Proto also Tony Pro. Got it. Um, there was a question about DB. Uh, do you think I uh, uh, got whacked DB because of he had porno charges coming? I think he wanted his business. That was one of the theories. Terrible. Yeah. But that might be fact. It may not be fact. We can suppose, right? But uh, who knows? You know? Yeah, but if you think about it, when... So basically, Sammy, and this is what he said. He said the split was 75 to Gotti, 12 and a half to Gravano, 12 and a half to DB, right? So and then they take DB out, 
and Gotti does uh, like 80-20. So Sammy really gained the most out of that deal. You know, so I don't know what the reason would be. Yeah. You know, but um that's a tough, tough that that situation there, that's just crazy. He and was in jail at the time too, guys. So, you know. know, crazy happening, man. Now, now, now um somebody wrote more than once that D B started out as the Cavacante. Is that you guys know anything about that? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Could be true. I mean I wouldn't see why I said with Jimmy Rotondo. Um, I'd like to look that up. That'd be interesting to see. Because I, I, it's a DB transfer to the Gambino family. But can you really transfer, isn't it? You know, yeah. probably if New York wants it, they'll get you. Yes, you could transfer, sure. Yeah. I got to look that up so I learn something new every day. It I also think so. depends how big of an earner you are, too. Yeah. <laughs> They're yeah. not going to let a, ma a major guy get out of there, you know. That's right. Which is. I think okay. Sammy had a hard on for DB because DB, I think okay. he looked at him as soft. Question yeah. for me. I think he looked that he was soft. And I think I Sammy had a hard on for that. Yeah, my family, family, was, like my yeah. family was 100% supportive. Uh, most of my family saw what my mother went through trying to raise two boys while my father ran off with his gumad. So they kind of weren't uh, so surprised. Disappointed, yes. Supportive, 100%. Uh, I got a year in Essex County. Got paroled from Essex County. And uh, never looked back. I've been legit since. I never jaywalked since the day I was out of, let, let out of prison. Tommy, when you went in, because the, the moniker of being mobbed up, was it a lot easier for you in jail, in prison? Yeah. 100%. Did they look in for you? County, I had food. <laughs> Anything I wanted to eat, I had. They didn't have Marlboro Lights in the prison. I got Marlboro Lights every day. Uh, yeah, I would say yes. Do people approach you like they know you're coming and then they search you out? Hey, come with us. Somewhat. Yeah. Some guys are pricks. But with the first weekend I was in there, really? there was a message sent to a a staff member there to take care of me. Right? Don't keep me in the in the in a you know in the in like a hole, I guess you would call it. You know, county jail is pretty 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 bad. It's not uh, it's not a good place to be. So they said, make sure you take this kid out, put him in a good spot. This this one officer. Irish guy called me into his office and then she sent me back into my cage and did nothing for me until Monday morning. I got sentenced on Friday and they kept me in a cage until Monday morning. And then word got back to the neighborhood and uh, it was kind of ugly. Were you in your mid 20s? How old were you? 26. Yeah, that's a rough time to go away. 26. So I lost you did everything. Did you climb in Jersey? Essex County. Yep. Newark. Yeah, because when no. they send you out west, the made guy thing is not, or the affiliated thing is no. not as, you know, well, big of a federal. deal as it is on the east. Well, that's federal. See, when you go with county, if they really mm -hmm. want to fuck with you, they give you right. 364. That means you're almost doing a year in county jail. County jail is everything mixed in, from parking tickets to fucking child killer molesters and everything mixed in between. You're just, it's a mishmash of everything in county jail. So when they really want to fuck with you, they give you 364. Because when you get 365, you go to state. Right. So there's county. And there's I think county. you're eligible for parole earlier. If it's like a County's year. County's the worst of the worst. Then and then there's federal. Mm -hmm. And then I got paroled you know, in county. But wow. County time. They really want to fuck with you. They put you in county. How did that they change you when you got back right on the street? <laughs> Because they tried to break me. They were trying to break me, so they put me in these conditions, you know? But they weren't breaking me. There was no there was no way. But how did it change you when you got back on the streets? Well, the first thing I that keeps clicking into my mind is seeing my grandmother from the second story window when they were taking me away to jail, crying outside the second story window. That's one thing. Yeah. And uh just you know, I don't know. I, I really can't answer it. I will tell you this: jail does not rehab people. No, they a lot of people come out worse. Yeah, no problem. Doing time is not. Listen, we as men adapt within twenty-four hours to our surroundings. We have survival instincts within us. We yeah. can do it the time. Something else kicks in. It's correctional, right? It's bullshit. It's penalty. Yeah. They call it a correctional facility. It's just a penalty. 
Mm-hmm. So, anyway, yeah, I didn't a- want to do life the installment plan, as they say. So I just made a change in my life, and I've been legit for the last 25 years. Which is good. Yeah. Yeah. One of my brothers went to jail, and um, he basically did uh, 38 months. No, 33 months. And that changed him, you know. He wound up getting his GED in there. He wound up getting uh, physical training courses he took. And he be- when he got out, he became a, a personal trainer. But that's federal probably. In county, yeah. there's, oh, yeah. Nothing. Yeah. In county, there's nothing to do except time. Yeah. Miserable, miserable time. But isn't that, is that even meant for those kind of stretches? Eleven months It's meant to be a it's short sort of repository, right? It's just demeaning. It's just it's barbaric. County time is barbaric time. Yeah, it's not good, man. It's not good. I don't know how they even let it be, but it's not good. Rob yeah. Lito did six months in Morristown and six months in County. I can't imagine that, that was fun. Rob's a good dude. I'll be very good to hear. Interesting. So we're going to wrap up soon, but before we wrap up, Tommy, the Jersey mob, give us, like, again, obviously you're not in the streets, and even if you were, knew anybody wouldn't say anything, but what's the prognosis? Do they have a shot? Is it always going to be around? You know, give us kind of the prognosis of the, of the Jersey mob. That's kind of the theme for tonight. I think because of the glamour, like I said before, and the greed, Mm-hmm. It'll never be what it once was. They're sure there's a business and there's going to be somebody to do it, but I do not think it'll ever be what it once was. And I think uh, greed and, oh, and, yeah. and and the pool that you're pulling from, it's not there. Yeah. So let me, so let me, um, let me ask you, whatever happened, you're going to say his name, but what happened to the guy who rolled on you? Where did he end up? Where is he today? I don't know. He's around. Interesting. So I have a I have a theory, and this goes more into, you know, guys that you know went to WITSEC or formerly rolled and then went into the program. If you really follow like the lifespan, let's say you take twenty different guys that went into WITSEC or went to went into um, um, whatever whatever situation post life or not WITSEC, right? A lot of them died a few years after, whether they were sick or not sick, just whatever reason. A lot of them wind up getting arrested again and going back to jail and serving time anyway. Yes. Some were got divorced, half didn't have their family, half went broke. Like imagine you're a wise guy making whatever you're making, 10, 20, 30, 40,000 a month cash. Now you now you have to get a job and you're only making twenty five hundred bucks a month gross, and only clean your clearing a few hundred bucks a month, right? You can't call your friends, can't call your families. So, like, I always wondered if they did a study on what was the outcome of ratting. Like, if they looked at the last 100, 200, 300 rats, if you will, what was the outcome and how did these guys end up? And if you say to somebody, listen, you can roll, but more than likely, this is what you're looking for. There was a guy in Jersey, and I forget the name. I was talking about it with, with somebody. He had dinner with um, Frank Legambi and the Jersey guys and New York guys. They met up over in Kettle, New Jersey. And he wind up, he was, uh, he wound up rolling. He did, he did the conversation. He killed the guy that was going to rat him. And then he killed himself in his own. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, uh, I know personally. What was his name? I know personally. Nikki Skin. Nikki, yeah. Nikki yeah, Skin. Nikki, yeah. No, no, personally. I know personally. Yeah. Well, so what I, you get what I'm saying? Like, it's like, I think, again, like not to, not to unpack, okay. but I want to, I like to look at exit strategy. Brooke and I always talk about and outcomes, right? Okay, hold on. Yeah. That was a crime of passion. Okay. His son was involved. His son his son was pinched in the same type of investigation. I think it was a crime of passion He uh, that that happened. That was a terrible day. I remember it clearly. I know the people personally. I'm friends with them. But, he killed, with, like, but who did he kill? A guy that I'm killed Al, Al Rossi. He killed the guy Al Rossi in, in Bloomfield. Vending machine. Yeah, he did it under the stewardship of the feds. He didn't care. He was gone. He killed himself two days later. Yeah, yeah. No, no. He didn't care. He was a career criminal forever since we were children. He was. But then he, why roll? That's what I don't get. Like I remember reading about that Frank Bologna, right? He, 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 he I think he rolled. Yeah. And made a deal that was going to help his son in his case. Got it. 
Because I remember about that Frank Bologna guy, right? He ratted on, I think, like Arlotta and. Uh, oh, John Bologna. John. John Bologna. Yeah. 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 No, Frank Bologna. Yeah. Sorry. And I remember yeah. him. He died. He was like diabetes. He was fat. He was sick. And he died like three days later. Bro, you can't wait for a year. Like, I, I just don't. Like, I'm telling you, I'm going to like hire an intern. I got 20 interns. The bottom anyway. line is, it doesn't end well for anybody involved. But that's my point. Like, I could see if like there was like an island of, of informants and there was like, you know, like Jack in the Boxes and rainbows and unicorns and like whatever. That I get, right? Like then there's an outcome. But I just like, I don't know if any, even Henry Hill, like Karen left them. He was like back in the drugs. Like I don't, but, I don't but, get what's the, but, what's the benefit. But turning, turning and being a cooperator is, is another street move. It's a street move. It's not, you're not going to see the Pope and get, and get, you know the the holy water thrown on you. Yeah. It's just another street move. They're still street guys. Yeah. Sammy the Bull is still a street guy in his brain. Yeah, he is a gangster, doing fantastic with what he does. But he he is a gangster. He never said anything else. He's not trying to rehabilitate kids and help children. He's he yeah. is what he is, right? Yeah. Yeah, but so, why? Why? Like he got to keep his money, right? He avoided a lengthy sentence. He put yeah. away, I, as I understand him, to be his best friend or at least an important colleague of his, if you will. Yeah. And then does something again to go away for 17 years. I, I just, I can't wrap my head around it. Not even surprised one bit. Yeah. Not even a little bit. He's a criminal. Yeah. It's, in the D it's in the brain. It's in the blood. It's in the DNA. It's how the mind works. And it's just a hustle until the day you die. Uh, uh, Walter says he likes Tommy. Maybe we'll have a fifth. Um, instead of the four horsemen, we'll be the head of the five families. Maybe we'll get Tommy in on the cruise with the guy. Well, Tommy smokes cigars, so that by right. Oh, yeah, yeah I know. Macanudo White. Macanudo White, a good. What, what are you, a bourbon guy, scotch? What do you drink? No, I just drink wine. Yeah, I drink wine. Is it, you always drink wine. <laughs> I just like wine. I don't know. I love that about you. Oh, listen, well, I, I only reason I don't drink wine is because I'm, try, I'm trying to do keto. But uh, I'll tell you this why. I'll tell you this why. For a lot of years, I smoked cigarettes. I drank every night, going out, partying, hanging out, day in, day out. Never a habit. Just it was the life that we were living, right? And I got sick. I ended up with like a hole in my esophagus. And wow. I couldn't drink for years. Never was an alcoholic or had a habit or anything. It just deteriorated in my esophagus. For two years, I had to eat white rice, take acid pills, and eat very, very strict. And then yeah. when I started to come around and feel better, I started just drinking wine, and I don't know if I want to hit the hard stuff again. I don't know. I don't blame you. We're going to fifth, we're gonna, we're gonna have the fifth horse, and we're going to call Jerry the graphic guy and have him add a fifth. All right, well, listen, we're going to – hey, Damien, how are you, buddy? Uh, keto is hard. Trust me. I like blue, like uh, uh, yo-yoing like an mf -er. So, all right. So, guys, any other questions you have for Vinny before – I was talking before we wrap up. Vinny or Joe? Tom, uh, yeah. someone asked about Newark. Is Silvio yeah. Davida still there? Apparently, he's still around. I don't would know. Would he be the most? Yeah, he's probably. The I one think he's the guy out. that pretty much is the one that would be the guy there. Right? I would assume so. Yeah, that was an answering a question over there. Yeah, I could go on for hours, guys. Well, I got Tommy, to had, Tommy answered that without answering it. I yeah. could go on for hours with the stories from the past. Forget about it. It's just great. <laughs> From you know, from the inside out, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's the best way. <laughs> I was uh, I was in many, many, many bad situations. And well, you yeah. came out to you came out to tell it and living yeah. but you know, I have to tell you, these people are rough. They're gonna look to see if you have a jaywalking ticket the last twenty years. God forbid you do and don't forget. <laughs> I got nothing to hide. I believe you don't. No, I'm good. <laughs> I believe you are. I'm good. And I'm good with all the guys. I'm good with everybody. So great. Yeah. So Joe, you got anything for a boy, Tommy? I just really want to thank him for you know answering my questions and uh, you know giving his insight on certain things. So I enjoy it. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Some Tommy. people regret it. Some people it's it's dark to them. I actually love talking about it. So it's it's well, enjoyable. Yeah. And if it if it uh. If it makes somebody enjoy that day, have a good time with it, gives them good some good insight, it's awesome for me. Pleasure Love meeting it. you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, thank, thanks, 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 Joe. 
we're gonna have coming on before we wrap up just make sure you hit the subscribe button um um we're, we're back to where we were prior to the splits i'm really excited about that the new guys in the crew helped make that happen um i'm going to be doing uh frank uh i was his name Fiorino, Lillo. Fiorino, yeah. Fiorino, they're gonna kill me. Great guy. Um, do a part two, um, and they're already starting. They're like, oh, why don't you make a meet with John? One thing at a time. Let me. Frank, I, Frank barely did an interview with me. He does very few interviews, but he's a great guy. He's coming back on the show. I'm gonna get a lot of questions lined up for him. I'm gonna get Fat Bolt to see on. I want to hear his story. I want to kind of deep dive with him. Uh, previous ones, check out, you know, Lee Cole, check out our um, question and answer from the Four Horsemen last night, and um, got to put the baby to bed. So, guys, listen, thank you all for being here in the chat. Thank you, Tommy. Thank you, the Four Horsemen, and I'll salute everybody. Have a good night. Thank all right, you. guys. Take care, guys. Yep. Be well.